Hello and welcome to this video as part of the Biology 1.5 Mammals as a Consumer External. In this video, we're focusing on physical digestion, so we're looking at steps 2 and 3 of food processing in mammals. When we're looking at where these occur in the digestive system, we'll be looking at the mouth, the stomach and the small intestine. We know that the whole purpose of physical digestion is to break up the food molecules that we're eating into a small enough form that they're able to be absorbed in the small intestine. So it makes sense that a lot of physical digestion occurs before the food actually reaches the small intestine. So we'll be looking mainly at the mouth, but also the stomach and the small intestine in this video. As we go through this video, we're going to be covering the what, why, where and how of physical digestion. And you're more than welcome to pause to have a read if you like. So what's digestion? Well, we know that digestion is the breakdown of large food materials into smaller materials, ultimately so that these food molecules are able to be absorbed across the small intestine wall into the bloodstream. So put simply, it's one of the ways that food gets into the body. There are two main types of digestion in mammals, the first of these being physical digestion, which we're going to be focusing on in this video. And the second of these is chemical digestion, which will be covered in the next video. An important definition for your exams is that of physical digestion, which is the mechanical breakdown of food from large pieces into smaller pieces. And ultimately, as we've talked about, we know we need both the processes of physical digestion and chemical digestion to break down the food that we eat, ultimately so we can absorb the nutrients that we need from the food. And we need these for key life processes listed here. In terms of this external, the key life processes that you should be considering are nutrition and respiration. So now that we've looked at the what, let's look at the why. As you already know, the gut is essentially a complex tube, and we've discussed the fact that there's an opening at the mouth and an anus. So therefore we can simplify this into this. And as we've said, we know that as the digestive tract moves through the human body, it takes on different names. For example, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and the large intestine. So you can imagine that because this is an open tube, essentially with an opening at the mouth and the anus, that it's like a deep intucking within the human body. So therefore, anything we put in our mouths isn't actually within the body. We need to absorb the food that we eat in order to gain the nutrients and energy that we need. So before food can be used by the cells of the body, it's got to pass through the lining of the gut. Like I said, we have to absorb it. So the whole purpose of digestion overall is that we need to break down the large food molecules that we're eating into smaller food molecules so that we can absorb them through the gut lining into our blood. After all, as you can imagine, we don't just eat a steak and absorb a steak as a whole. So this is where physical digestion comes in because physical digestion mechanically breaks the food that we eat into smaller pieces. And this has the effect of increasing the surface area available for digestive enzymes to work as efficiently as possible during later chemical digestion. And you can imagine that by increasing the surface area available, this increases the rate of reaction between digestive enzymes and the food that we've eaten. So it makes the reaction much more efficient and means we increase our nutrient absorption. So take the example of the hamburger. As you can see, mechanical digestion breaks the hamburger into lots of little chunks, although in real life, the chunks would be a heck of a lot smaller. Physical digestion helps to make these chunks small enough that we can then absorb them through the gut lining of the wall. So where does physical digestion occur? Well, as you can imagine, the majority of physical digestion occurs in the mouth with the act of chewing. However, it's important for you to know that physical digestion also occurs in the stomach and the small intestines. So let's go through these one by one. First of all, physical digestion in the mouth. As I said, the main form or pattern of physical digestion in the mouth is chewing, also called mastication. It makes a lot of sense that the first place where physical digestion occurs is in the mouth, straight after we've actually eaten or ingested the food. And as with any form of physical digestion, chewing and having teeth helps to break up those large lumps of food that we're eating into smaller parts so that we can swallow them and they can end up in the stomach. You can imagine that humans and other mammals have special types of teeth that have been adapted over time to help mammals eat their specific diets that they do. For example, carnivores and herbivores have very different types of teeth. Some important teeth for you to know in your exams are the incisors. These are located at the front of the mouth and they have a chisel-like edge to help cut and bite off pieces of food. Other important teeth you should know are the canines. These are next to the incisors and although are only slightly pointed in humans, they are highly developed in carnivores. This helps with the tearing and piercing action that carnivores need when they're eating their prey. 
The premolars are next, they're behind the canines and they're flat, large teeth used for crushing food into smaller pieces. And the molars are the last example you should be aware of, and they help the premolars crush food as well. Moving on now to physical digestion in the stomach. Here the main pattern of physical digestion is called churning, where churning involves waves of muscle contractions of the stomach wall. And you can imagine that this helps to mix up and mechanically break up any food in the stomach. And you can see the process of churning in this example here, where you can see the muscle contraction of the walls of the stomach causing the contents of the stomach to get mixed and broken up. Churning also helps to move food from the stomach into the next part of the digestive system, the small intestine. And there's more physical digestion in the small intestine. Here the main pattern is called peristalsis, where peristalsis simply refers to waves of contractions and relaxation of the muscle wall in the small intestine. Again, because it's part of physical digestion, we know that it's mixing up and mechanically breaking up any food in the small intestine, and as you can see with this diagram, peristalsis helps to propel food along the small intestine towards the large intestine. And that brings us to the end of the video. So here's a what you need to know summary from what we've talked about in this video, where we've covered the what, the why, the where, and the how. And again, you can pause this to have a read if you'd like. In the next video, we'll be covering chemical digestion. So I'll see you there.